Hi, I'm Suzanne Collins, Creative Memories Advisor from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And in just a second, I'm going to take you into my craft studio and show you why the Creative Memories Zero Centering Ruler is an essential tool to have in your arsenal. The Zero Centering Ruler is a 3 by 12 inch ruler that is set up on a quarter inch grid in which the ruler starts at zero in the center and works its way out to six inches on either side going left to right and up to down it goes from zero to one and a half inches top to bottom the increments on the ruler itself are in imperial settings and they are labeled to one eighth and they show the extra markings to one sixteenth of an inch. The ruler isn't set up for metric, but because you're using it more as a centering tool, looking at lines, it doesn't really, really matter. <laughs> because of the grid orientation, it makes it easy to find the center of any project, card, page, photo, or element. Let me give you some examples. This is a four by six photo, which I do want to cut down to four by five and a half, but I don't want to cut off one end because my image of my photo will not be balanced anymore. So I can use my zero centering ruler to find the center of my photo and then crop accordingly on either side. So by laying your ruler over your photo, I can see that on both sides, my image of my hands of my people and this person here, it is going at about the two and a quarter inch mark on either side. So now I know that where my zero line is, is the center of my photo. I'm going to slide this down to a horizontal line to give me a perfect perpendicular look to my photo. So everything's square, half of five and a half is two and three quarters. So now I'm going to go to the two and three quarter mark and I'm just going to mark a little mark here and two and three quarters. It's already measured out for me. I'm going to put a little mark here. So this is where I need to be cutting my photos to have a perfectly centered image. And likewise for this photograph, it is a four by six. I want to make it for my layout a four by four. So I'm going to be centering again between my images. If I run my ruler, I'm basically centered here. I'm two inches on that side and two inches on that side. So my images between my two inch lines are about the same. So now again, I can mark off where I want to trim. This time, because I've got a dark photo, I'm using a white pen to mark where my cuts are going to be. There we are. So next I'll show you how you can use your zero centering ruler to quickly lay out your grid on the center of your page. Don't forget your zero centering ruler, let me put some weight on it so you can see better, is on a quarter inch grid with all your squares. So if I want to lay my first photo a half an inch from the bottom of the page, I'm going to line up my ruler so that I see two blocks from the bottom of the page. If I want my ruler to be a half an inch from the page, remember these rulers are fit perfectly between your jeeping. So if I'm going 
two lines from the bottom of the page. I'm going to go half an inch from the edge of the page. I will just set my, see how nice and blunt that sits? I will set that just there. If I want my next element quarter of an inch over, again, I'm just going to place that one, one block over. Actually, I'm going to do an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to go one block over again and lay down that element. If I want to go an eighth of an inch or a quarter inch above the next one, I'm just going to slide my ruler up the page, going a quarter inch, and I'm laying down my next element like so. And this one I'm going to bring back in here. Even with the other one, going an eighth of an inch for my spacing between my elements, doing a quarter inch upwards between my elements. And my grid is done. For this page, I am going to lay, I've got my fresh fusion paper here, I'm going to use my candy shop here and I want to add a title for my little sparks down the side here. So I'm going to show you how to use your centering ruler to lay out your letters and keep them centered as a title. So in this one we're going to do vertically. For this demonstration on placing title letters on a strip, I'm going to be working on a white sheet rather than a page so it's easier for you to see my ruler in the uh, video. But normally I would just do this right on the page because my eye isn't as far. Now what I've done is I'm setting up my ruler down a 12 inch grid so I know where my zero center line is. I am working vertically this time. And for my image here, I think I'm going to dance my letters so they're not going to be perfectly, perfectly centered down the page, but I did lay out on the mat with um, my six inch mark equidistant between these two edges of the sheet. So I kind of know where a vertical center is. I've already added my adhesive to the backs of my letters and I'm about ready to go. Now, for those of you who are older, you'll remember the days where you had manual typewriters and to center something on a page you had to count how many uh, letters there were and space things out. So we're basically going to be using the same principle. I have six letters here so I want three on top of the zero and three going down. I do want to be a finish about an inch from either side of the end of the page because I don't want my lettering stretched out too far. So I'm going to start with the R here and I'm going to place it on the page about center. But I'm going to dance it down here a bit. I'm going to rotate it a bit. So it's about the center mark going down on the page. My K I'm going to dance the other way. And my S. And you can see how I'm about one and a quarter inches up from the bottom of the page, which is what I want to be at least an inch back on either side. I am using repositional tape in case I do need to juggle things, but with this centering system, it should go down pretty easily on the first go. There's my P is going to dance this way. My top S, S should finish at about the one and a half. Right about there, one and a half from the top. Get the first S a bit straighter. And there we are. Ready to go on the layout. And there we have it. At the end of this video, I'm giving you a bonus. I've included the sketch for the 
framework little recipe template and all the dimensions for cutting your strips and how to use your zero centering ruler to set it up. So catch that at the end. Adding titles with your EBC sticker letters and your zero centering ruler. I'm going to do this demonstration assuming that you do not own the Creative Memories Titletopia. So basically I want to write a title. I'm putting bowling in this space up here. I have a element at an angle here and I want to have my grid line follow that. So first I'm going to measure my space and see how much room I have. So I'm going, you can see here, between the jeeping and my paper, it's two and three quarters down here at the bottom. Two and three quarters, two and three quarters. I'm now gonna rotate that along that element. And I want my lettering to be half inch up higher. So I'm gonna go uh, two grid lines up from that space. One grid line, two grid lines. So my zero on this page right now is here. I can draw, quickly draw a line to put my lettering on, keep things nice and straight. I've taken all my letters off my ABCs that I'm gonna need and I added them to my slick sheet. So a slick sheet, uh, the backing of any ABCs uh, embellishment sticker packs you get. I've taped one to the bottom of my mat and I use it for this or if I'm adding adhesive to a fine embellishment border with my repositional tape. The tape does not stick to this and it just sticks to the items I want to use it for. So they come in really handy. All right. Lay that down and we'll get ready to go. And there you have it. Your zero centering ruler can also be used in conjunction with your border maker system if you want to cut and center elements that are smaller than the full 12 inch width and have it balanced on either side. So for an example of that, I want to add some dips and diamonds in the edge of this card so when it sits on the background the image shows through very nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this cardstock and I'm going to roughly center the item I want to cut in my holder and I'm going to slide my zero centering ruler in to help me center it. For this example, I'm going to use a uh, white cardstock sheet as well, just to help you see what I am doing. In here, you can see where your zero center line is, and you can see your grid. So I am at two inches, three and a half, so I'm gonna take my black cardstock and I'm sliding it down till it's two and a half it looks like on this side no nope, i'm gonna go two and a quarter two and three quarters two and three quarters and two and three quarters on my grid and this way i know my cardstock is perfectly centered within my 
folder. So when I go on and punch, my design image is now balanced across my cardstock. This also technique also comes in handy if you want to create mats for your photos. This was a five by five piece of paper. I centered it all the way around with the dips and diamonds and I created this cute little mat that will mat a four by four photo brilliantly. Centering and spacing banners when you're attaching to a, a page can be a bit daunting as well. This one I've done a couple of times and it was, it was just having issues with it. So I am going to use my zero centering ruler to place them. I basically want them to go in between the top edge of this photo to about here where I have more of a horizontal line coming in from the edge here. And I'm gonna ignore the bottom portion. So I'm gonna add this here just so you can see where I want my visual line to be. Like I said, I've done place these a few times. So they're already got sticky on them and they are actually starting to tear my page a little bit. So I wanna get them down properly this time. So again, I'm going to center in between what you see is my pink grid now and my zero. So I am going basically in between the one inch mark, a little bit more, and the one and a bit mark there. So my three words I'm putting in, my middle word, I'm going to center right on the zero take you off. I want you a, a away from the photo. I don't want you flush with the photo. So I'm going to slide this over. I'm going to put you almost three quarters of an inch away. I'm going to tuck you in the middle between the one quarter and the one quarter mark. Good. I want you an eighth above that. Nice and square with the top of my photo. Right there. And my last one. There's my hotel. And finally, these things are now sitting in there nice and even and even with that grid space that I wanted to create. I'm happy. Sometimes you'll find myself and other Creative Memories advisors asking you to mark some of your punches and tools in order for you to use them on another uh, layout design or creation we're making. So to do that, it's easy with the zero centering ruler. A little bit of a measure, as you can see again. So basically what you want to do is find out your grid line. Here I'm going between the two black pieces and it is roughly one and one sixteenths on either side of the plastic. So once I know what that is at 1 and 1 16 and 1 and 1 16 on both sides, I can go down at my zero mark and go right here into the punch and mark my halfway point on my punch. And the same goes for the larger standalone border punches. To mark the center, a lot of times I will go in between the two little lines add my zero centering ruler 
make sure that my grid lines are reading the same on either side. And once I know what that mark is, I can go in with my pen, if I'm not blocking your view, and mark my center point on my punch. So right now I'm going to show you how quickly you can assemble the framework recipe template measurements to a sheet of paper using the Creative Memories zero centering ruler. The template measurements show that the outside edge of the template is a half inch width and the inside spaces between your pieces is a quarter inch. I have all my pieces cut with adhesive on the back. I have my zero centering ruler. So let's begin. I'm going to go flush with my jeeping and I'm going to go a half inch from the bottom of the page so I can see two blocks. First piece, two and seven eighths by three and a half, will sit a half inch from the edge of the page. So I'm going two blocks from the edge. Nice thing about these ones, it has a nice flush edge for you to put your piece against so it doesn't slide. And that's piece number one. Second piece, piece number two. Next piece we're calling for quarter inch apart is my strip flush with the edge so you down and up there we go and now we're gonna start lining up our little pieces I'm gonna go dark green first inch from the last piece I put down and I'm finishing a half inch from the edge. Here we are. I want to go a quarter inch above this one so I'm going to slide this up so I see one bar only and I'm going quarter inch from the edge here. So the next one is going to be my light color. Are going up a quarter inch again, flush with my jeeping. There we are. I'm going to use a shimmer piece next. And now you'll see all these pieces should be lined up the same. And I'm going a quarter inch above that again, and I'm adding my big piece just here voila voila I'm adding my little piece I'm back to the dark green just there we're going up a quarter inch again above that one we're going with the lighter color So, bingo, bingo, going up a quarter inch again above that one, flush with my jeeping, I'm going flush on my right hand side, shimmer piece this time, done, done, I should all be flush up here the same, yes, I'm going a quarter inch above that again for my next piece, and we're back to our smaller pieces on this side half inch from the edge of the frame. I don't want to lean over too far because I don't want to block my camera view. Next piece, it was a quarter inch from there. Done. And on this side, we're back to our last three pieces. Oh, 
pillow piece. <clears throat> Quarter inch up again. And our last shimmer piece. <coughs> and there you have your sketch layer. No jiggling around, repositioning a hundred times. Done in one. The simplicity of the Creative Memories Zero Centering Ruler. Thanks for joining me on this discovery of all you can do with the Zero Centering Ruler. And I trust when you're next in your workshop, it will be close at hand.